Hi, my name is Lavinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel where we learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I'm very happy to teach you and give you tips on how to play Five Tribes. I love Five Tribes because it's one of those games that at the beginning, it seems like it's very straightforward, it's entertaining, it's very pretty, and then halfway through the game, you realize how complex it can be. It is one of those games where as soon as you're done with your first game, you will want to play again. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. In Five Tribes, you play a traveler venturing into the legendary Sultanate of Nakala. You will need the help of five local tribes. The Yellow Viziers, who give you points. The Elders, who help invoke the power of the Jinns. The Merchants, who give you resources. The Builders, who give you gold. And the Assassins, well, to take care of some tribe members. At the end of the game, the player with the most victory points is declared the great Sultan of Nakala and wins the game. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a board with these tiles. Start by placing the 30 tiles depicting the Sultanate of Nakala in a random 6x5 grid. Then you randomly take the 90 meeples from the bag and place 3 on each tile. These come in five colors, more or less distributed equally, with just a couple more white elders and a couple less yellow viziers. Then each player collects eight camels and one turn marker in the color of their choice for a three or four player game. In a two player game, players collect 11 blue or pink camels and the corresponding two turn markers. Players each collect 50 gold and keep it face down until the end of the game. Shuffle the gin cards and draw three cards. Place them face up near the board like this. And then keep the others in a draw deck face down here. Shuffle the resource cards and draw nine cards. Place them face up near the board like this. And place the rest of the deck face down here. Place the 12 palm trees, 10 palaces, and remaining gold coins in the supply within easy reach of all players. Place the bid order and turn order tracks like this near the board. And then you shuffle the player's turn markers and randomly place them on the bid order track. This is the order that players will initially bid for position in the turn order track. Then we are going to each take one of these sheets because it shows you what all the gins do and it has a really cool summary of all the actions and things. Each turn comes in three phases. You have the bidding phase, then you have the action phase, and then you have the cleanup. Let's have a look at how the bidding phase works. It's one of the really cool aspects of Five Tribes. At the beginning of each turn, players bid to decide on the turn order. The more you pay, the more likely you are to go first. However, be mindful of how much you pay because gold coins are also victory points. The player in first position on the bid order track chooses a position on the turn order track, immediately pays the cost and places his player marker. The player in the second position does the same on another spot as only one player can occupy the same position. It goes on and on. If a player has already chosen the zero and another second player also picks the zero, the previous one is pushed up and will play last. Once all the players have placed their markers on the turn order track, the action phase can begin. The player who is furthermost to the right will start. The first action you take is to move your turn marker back to the rightmost available space on the bid order track. Now it's time to move the meeples. Choose a tile with at least one meeple on it and pick up all the meeples. Then you drop one meeple to an adjacent tile until you run out of meeples. There are three simple rules for that. The first is that the last meeple you drop must match one of the meeples already on that tile. Pick up all the meeples matching that color. The second rule is that you cannot go diagonally. You can only move sideways. The last rule is that you cannot backtrack immediately like that. You can, however, come back to the same tile if you have enough meeples. Mm -hmm. 
Now you should have at least two meeples in hand. These are the meeples you're going to use in the tribe action phase. For now, if you've taken the last meeple from the last tile, you control it and you place one of your camels on it here. This camel will stay here until the end of the game. You will score the victory points indicated in the top right corner. No other camels can be placed here, but new meeples can be dropped here later in the game. Now we can take the tribe's actions. These will depend on the meeples you've just taken. If it's yellow viziers, keep them with you. They will give you points at the end of the game. If you pick white elders, also keep them with you to use later on to buy or activate the powerful gins. If you pick green merchants, pick up the first cards of the resource track corresponding to the number of merchants you just picked up. These can include slave or resource cards. Then return the meeples to the bag. You can sell resource cards for gold during the game or keep them for points at the end of the game. You can use slave cards during the game. Note that the slave cards were replaced by Fakir cards, which is a good thing, in more recent versions of the game. Now let's have a look at the blue builders. Here I have picked up three blue meeples. I will multiply them by the number of tiles with a blue victory point surrounding and including the tile I ended on. So here it would be three times five tiles for 15 gold. You can also add one or more fakirs to make more builders. So in this case, I'm adding two fakirs and it will be a final result of five times five. So 25 gold coins. Finally, we have the red assassins that take care of other meeples. To kill one single meeple within at least two tiles of your final tile. Remember, you cannot go diagonally, but you don't have to go in a straight line. You can also kill one tile farther for each Fakir you want to use as an assassin. So in this case, if you spend two Fakir plus two assassins, you can reach four. Now that you have taken your meeple action, you can take the action of the tile where you ended your movement on. In the bottom left corner of each tile, you can see what action you can take. There are three major types of tiles in this game. You can go to the market, you can invoke Jin or you can play structures. If you end up on one of these tiles, you can go to a small market. You spend three gold and you choose one of the first three cards in the resource track. These are the big markets and after paying six gold, you can pick two cards within the first six on the resource card track. If you end up in one of those sacred places, you can spend either two elders or one elder and one fakir card to invoke a jinn and place it in front of you. Some jinns have passive powers, which are always on. Others have powers that you can activate once per turn if you can pay the elders or fakirs required to activate them. Finally, in those tiles, you place a palace here and a palm tree here. These are placed whether you own the tile or not, and you can place more than one palace or palm tree on a tile. The only two mandatory actions are the palaces and the palm tree tile actions. The gins and the markets are optional. Finally, at the end of your turn, you can choose to sell merchandise to get some gold. The more different cards you have, the more expensive the series. Note that cards are not all as frequent. There are only two of each of these three cards four of each of these three and six of these three here. Refer to the table here to see how much your merchandise cards are worth. Fakirs do not count in this case. Each player in turn order repeats this. Once all players have played, it's time for the cleanup phase. This is where we're going to replenish the gin cards and the merchandise. And replenish the gin and merchandise cards to three and nine respectively. The game ends when one player doesn't have any camels left or there are no more legal moves for the meeples. You finish the turn and you score the points. For scoring the points, you're going to get the scoring pad and we're going to count them as follows. One point for each gold coin you own and then one point per vizier you own plus 10 points for each opponent who has strictly less viziers than you. Two points per elder you own and if you have a gin card that helps you, then four points and all the victory points from your gins. Three points for each palm tree on your tiles, those with your camels, and five points for each palace on your tiles. Then you add all the points on your tiles. 
So with the points for each series of merchandise cards, in this case, this one here would be 30 points and this one seven points. The Fakirs do not count. The player with the most points wins the game and becomes the great Sultan of Nakala. If you tie, you'll have to play again. My tips to win at Five Tribes are check the board properly uh, before you bid at the beginning of each turn, especially towards the end of the game. Overbidding can cost you dearly. It's often a good idea to pick up some elders in a sacred place at the beginning of the game to maximize the power of the jinns. Getting some resource cards that are rare at the beginning of the game can make you a lot of points at the end. Combining the power of the jinns can be very powerful if because you can play them every turn if you have enough fakirs or elders. Jinns can be very costly, so make sure you have enough fakirs and elders in order to activate them. Do not dismiss the, the blue builders. They can make a lot of points. So that's how you play Five Tribes. I like the unique mechanism where it's not a standard worker placement, rather a worker displacement because you start with all the meeples on the board and you move them throughout the game. I like as well how many paths there are to win and how completely different each game is. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe or if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.